Let's get started on your notes over graphing quadratic functions. So the first thing I want to show you are the steps to graph a quadratic function. So the first thing we're going to do whenever we're graphing a quadratic function is we're going to use x equals negative b over 2a to find the axis of symmetry. So we're going to look for that axis of symmetry first. And then we're going to use that x value, plug it into x for in our function, and find the vertex. So we're going to find that line that divides the parabola into two congruent halves first. Then we're going to find our vertex. Is it a minimum? Is it a maximum? And then we're going to use that vertex as the middle point in our table because we know that that vertex is the highest or lowest point then we want to see what the points are doing on either side of that of that particular point so or what the function is doing on either side of that point so we're going to find two points above and below or left and right and then we're going to graph the points whoops we're going to graph the points and connect to make a parabola so let's get started on our first example f of x equals x squared this is your quadratic parent function so if i identify a b and c well again if nothing is in front of that variable i can put a one there so a is in front of the x squared so it's one do we have any x term we're constant no so my b and c values are just zero which means when i look for my axis of symmetry negative b over 2a and i plug in zero um, in that particular formula i'm going to get x equals zero for my axis of symmetry and then i'm going to plug in zero for x right here to find the y value of my vertex obviously if i take zero and i square it i'm going to get zero so let's go ahead and graph that point right here. Zero, zero. We know this point is the vertex. That's the point where this parabola changes direction. Okay, so we know on either side of this point, to the left and to the right of it, it's gonna be either going up or it's gonna be going down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this vertex and I'm gonna put it in the middle of my table and then I'm gonna look for the points that are two that are to the left and two that are to the right. So if I look two to the left, that's negative one and negative two, and to the right is one and two. So now when I plug in negative one for x, so I'm gonna go back to this function right here, and I'm gonna plug in negative one for x. When I plug in negative one for x and I square it, what do I get? I get positive one. What if I did on the other side of that vertex and I plugged in one for x? What's one squared? It's also positive one. Let's do negative two. Negative two squared. What is negative two squared? It's four. What about positive two? Positive two squared is also four. So what are you noticing if that vertex is in the middle of your table? What are you noticing about the points on either side of the vertex? the y values are the same. Because if I take a positive number and square it, my answer is positive. If I take a negative number and square it, my answer is also positive. So let's graph these points now. I'm gonna graph negative one, one, and one, one. I kinda like to go out like that. One, one, negative one, one. Then I'm gonna graph negative two, four, and positive two, four. So negative two, four, positive two, four, those are my points. And this is what your parent quadratic function look like, looks like. This is your most basic quadratic function. It's the simplest one out there. And your domain, your domain is your set of all x values. So your domain for this function is gonna be all real numbers. There's my fancy r. And in fact, your domain for every quadratic function is gonna be all real numbers, but your range that's what will change. Your range is your set of all y values. So I'm going to look at the number line on my y-axis, and there's my, my vertex is a minimum. 
which means it's the lowest point on the graph, which means all of my y values are above it, which means y is going to be greater than or equal to that lowest point. That lowest point is 0, 0, so y is greater than or equal to 0. Let's go on to the next one. So x squared minus 4. And again, I'm going to label a, b, and c. So what's the value of a? It's 1. In this one, what's the value of, value of b? v? Be careful. 0, there's no b value because there's no x term. And then c is negative 4. And so you might remember from yesterday, when I have a value of 0 for b, and I plug it into my formula of x equals negative b over 2a, I'm just going to get an axis of symmetry of 0. So then I'm going to plug in that 0 for x, and I'm going to find what is the y value when I plug in 0 for x. So when I plug in 0 for x up here, and I'm going to zoom in, it looks like this. So 0 squared minus 4, I just get negative 4. And then I'm going to take that vertex and put it in the center of my table, the middle of my table, because I know 0, negative 4 is my vertex. I know that that is the point where this parabola changes direction. So I want to see what the graph is doing on either side of this point. So I'm going to look for two values to the left and two values, whoop, not negative, two values to the right. And then all I'm going to do is just plug in those x values into my function to figure out what is the value for y. So let's do that. So when I plug in negative 2 for x, it's going to look like this. Negative 2 squared minus 4. Well, that's just 4 minus 4, which is 0. If I plug in negative 1 for x, negative 1 squared minus 4 is 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. And then if I plug in 1 for x, 1 squared minus 4 is just 1 minus 4, which is negative 3. And then when I plug in 2, 2 squared minus 4 is 4 minus 4, which is 0. So let's make some observations about what we just did. Well, I know that these two points are the same. And obviously, negative 2 and positive 2, the y values are also the same. So I shouldn't say points, but the y values are the same. Okay, so what else do we notice? Right here, the x-intercept is when y is 0. I can tell in my table of values, these are my x-intercepts. That's an x-intercept, and that's an x-intercept, which means that's where it crosses my x-axis, at negative 2, 0, and positive 2, 0. And then my other points are negative 1, negative 3, and positive 1, negative 3. And so here's what this particular graph looks like. And that's what it should look like because my a value is positive, which means it opens up. And in fact, it does. So what's our domain for this particular function? It's all real numbers. And the range, that's what's changed. The range, that vertex is 0, negative 4. And it opens up, which means this is our minimum value. Our range is y is greater than or equal to that negative 4. Okay, let's do our last example, 3. Okay, and I have this particular quadratic written in standard form. So let's identify a, b, and c. a is negative 1, b is 2, and c is 3. And then let's use those values and plug it into our formula to find our axis of symmetry negative b over 2a. So I encourage you to pause this video and actually do that now. So when I plug in negative b over 2a, that's going to be negative 2 over 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2 over negative 2, which is x is 1, which means my axis of symmetry is right here. Here's that line that's going to divide the parabola into two congruent halves. So then how do I find my vertex? I take that x value, or that axis of symmetry value right here, and I plug it in for x, and I determine what is y when x is 1. So I would encourage you to go ahead and do that now.
if you want to plug it in using your calculator or if you want to plug it in using what we've done on the previous examples where we actually replace the x variable with parentheses and then simplify it using our order operations, I would do that now. So when I plug in 1 for x, I get 4 for y, and I'm going to put that vertex in the middle of my table of values, and I'm actually going to go ahead and graph that point, 1, 2, 3, 4. So there's my vertex. So without doing anything else, can you tell me if this, well, I guess you can't tell me since this is a video, but can you determine if the parabola opens up or opens down? It's going to open down. So let's see if it does that whenever we find our other points. And it opens down because our a value is negative. So two points to the left and two points to the right. What would two points to the left be? I'm going to change colors here. Two points to the left are going to be 0 and negative 1. Two points to the right are going to be 2 and 3. So what we're going to do now is we're going to plug in each value for x. And I'm only going to do one value, and then you can do the rest using your calculator or using the method that I'm going to show you. So the first thing I'm going to do is replace x with parentheses. And then I'm going to plug in this negative 1 for x. And I'm going to simplify a little bit each time. So that's going to be negative 1 minus 2 plus 3. I get negative 3 plus 3 is 0. So then you can pause the video and do the rest if you want. Hopefully you were able to fill in the rest of your table, but when I plug in 0 for x, I get 3 for y. And then when I plug in 2 for x, I also get 3 for y. So I get the same y values here. And when I plug in 3, ba -ba -da -ba, I also get 0 for y. So now when we graph these points, I like to graph my vertex first, which I did. And I know that it's going to be symmetrical, so I know what my graph is doing on either side of that point. I'm going to have the same y value, so I kind of like to go out starting from the center. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph 0, 3, and 2, 3. So when I graph 0, 3, that's right there. And when I graph 2, 3, that's right there. And then the next points that I'm going to graph is, like I said, I kind of start with my vertex and I go out in either direction. Negative 1, 0, and 3, 0. So negative 1, 0 is right there, and 3, 0 is right there. And those are my x-intercepts. The x-intercept is when y is 0. So I know that's an x-intercept and that's an x-intercept. And and it, my parabola opens down. I'm not drawing very good parabolas. It should look more like a U, but it's fine. So what's my domain? It's still the same. It's all real numbers, but my range, because my parabola has flipped and it now opens down, this vertex at 1, 4 is a maximum value. This 4 is the, the biggest Y value that I'm going to have on this graph, Every y value is going to be less than or equal to that point. There's nothing up here, which means I'm not going to have anything larger than 4 for a y value. So my range is y is less than or equal to 4. And that concludes your notes over graphing quadratic functions. I hope it was helpful.